Sky Boat Builders. We're back again with our second video of the day. Uh, this one we're just going to cover some uh, some new techniques that we've been playing with, uh, some new ways of building that we think are going to work really well, and uh, just a couple of little uh, little tips that we that we use here around the shop that uh, that might help you out. So uh, so Mike, if you come in here. One of the one of the things that we do on our on our bigger boats, this is a snowshoe 16. I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, you can see the this is the this is the outer gunnel. This is the inner gunnel, and you see there's blocks in here. So they're actually separated by blocks, and this is what Platt called a, a truss uh, construction, and he uses it on bigger boats. And so on our smaller boats, uh, like this one, you can see. They're generally, you run your outer gunnel, you run your inner gunnel, and they're glued to the top of the ribs. So all the way down through. Now if you notice on this boat, what I've done is I've taken a little piece of wood and I've slid it down in there halfway. So all of these, down, down this boat the whole way between the ribs halfway, I've put a little piece of uh, poplar in this case, slid it down in there. And I think it makes a much stronger boat. It's the, the inner gunnel is less vulnerable. And I think the main advantage of the truss construction is that it provides you a wider glue point to hold everything together. This provides you a lot more glue points. I think it's a much sturdier construction. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything. You've already got the wood from leftover rib pieces. It's already cut to the right thickness to slide in there. Uh, and again, we're going to be using that technique on all our boats from now on. And the way you do it is... Uh, I don't have anything I can, I don't have a boat to show you, but a boat would be upside down on the forms and the ribs would be over length because you've bent them and put them in there. So what you do is just cut off the rib, don't cut it off flush, cut it off a couple inches above there, cut it off and then take it, uh, I use the little band saw on that and just cut off a bunch of little pieces like that. Mark, you can see I didn't do a good job of erasing the marks here. You mark halfway between the ribs, come in, Put a little dab of epoxy on there, glue it to it, put it flush, put a clamp on it, glue them all down through like that, down each side. Um, let them sit for about four hours or so so the epoxy is set up. You don't have to let them glue completely. Oh, and I forgot, you want to do, you want to build your inner gunnel first. You don't want to build your inner gunnel after that. So you build your inner gunnel first, take it out, put these pieces in, glue them, put your inner gunnel back on, a little dab of glue here, and... I think it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, I think. But uh, you just glue these pieces on it. It adds a lot of glue points, adds a lot of structure to the boat. And uh, like I said, it doesn't cost you anything. You've got plenty of epoxy, you've got plenty of wood to do it with. It's already cut to the right size, so I highly recommend doing that. I think that's a good way to build a boat. Uh, let's see, what else are we covering on this one? Jigs. Uh, if you've been watching our videos, you know that I, that I love to do jigs for things. I've got my little the little ones I use here for holding the boat up. Uh, I've got the one that I use right there for making scarf joints. This one for cutting strips. And so I love to use jigs. And what we have here is one of the things, one of the things that I've struggled with is, you know, when you're building your boat, you screw your stem or your stern piece to the strong back. And so you'd have the piece going down to the other end. And when you're building anything, you want to make sure that everything is straight and true. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure this is straight. And then in this case, this one is actually off a little bit. So what I do, I've already, I already made this ahead of time. So you, you'd make a little shim. This is just a couple folded up pieces of uh, paper. Uh, I think it's actually masking tape. You loosen that back up. And this one was off, this one was off this way. It was coming out this way a little bit. So you go underneath the screw, you put your little shim in like that. And you screw it back in. You try to screw it back in. Okay, so now it's, now it's dead square. The problem I've run into is how do you keep it square uh, at the point where you're, when you start, and you can see this thing still got some bend in it. So even though you've, even though you've got the keelson glued on and the other end, you've still, it's still got a little wobble in it. So the thing that I've always struggled with is how do you keep it 
absolutely dead square when you're attaching the stringers to it. And so what I've come up with is these little jigs. This one's for the bow, the other one's for the stern. And you make sure that you've got a dead, uh, dead square cut here and a dead square cut there. And this one's made for, for my particular strong back. If you're going to do this, you should you know, make it to fit yours. But you basically clamp this on there. Then you clamp this on here. And that will hold it square while you're putting on the first couple of stringers on the other side. So you come in, you put those stringers on, and then you notice there's a little gap right here. When you put the stringers on this side, you cut and fit them, but then when you go to, when you go to glue them on or put a screw in or pin them, whatever you're doing, you clamp this back on and you use that little jig and that holds it in place. And that way this thing stays dead straight the whole time. It's not gonna move. Uh, takes a couple minutes to make these. I think it's a, a good way to keep your boat true while you're building it. Just take not much to it. A couple pieces of one by three. All right, so that's that. Uh, let's see, the next thing we're gonna cover is uh, building decks. Uh, the decks on the boat can be anything. This, uh, this boat, this is just a piece of hardwood flooring that I got uh, just a scrap from Lumber Liquidators, I believe. And I love this stuff. It's, it's nice, you get all these really unusual looking hardwoods. Uh, it makes a nice little deck. Um, those, on that boat over there, that's just plywood covered with glittery stars and hearts. And this one is just some, uh, this one is just some laid up scrap pieces that I had laying around, glued them, planed them, put them on there. It makes a pretty deck, but it's, uh, you don't have to do anything like that. And if you notice, all the boats have this little loop on there. And the reason I put that on there is just a handy thing to have on a boat. You can see it's on, it's on all three of these boats, it's on all my other boats. And so now I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, this is, I believe it's braided polyester line. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it's called. And the good thing about this stuff is you can, you can just peel it back like that, and you can cut off a piece in the middle. This is the, this is the inner core of the stuff. So this is about an 8-inch piece of... Uh, of uh, Poly, and you can see that the core on it is cut off to about there. So probably about four inches of core, and then an inch on this side, two or three inches on this side. And you can see it tends to fray. So I tape off the one end like that. Uh, let's see. So the next step is to, to go in at, here's, here's where the core was. The core is still in there, obviously. Put a pencil in through like that, push it through and create a nice little gap, wiggle it around until you've got a nice clean hole in there. And you may have to work it a little bit, so I'm not gonna do that, I made up props. Then you take the, you take this end that you've taped off, it comes to a little point, you slide it through there, and you end up with something that looks like this. It's got the, uh, just basically slid the, uh, slid the end through, left yourself a little loop, and the core, uh, the core is in there now. This is the, so you've actually pulled the core all the way through. Uh, the next step is you tape off the whole end like this. Then this is a 3 8 inch uh, rope, so you drill a 3 8 inch hole in your deck, and wherever you want it, somewhere in the center of the deck there. And then you push this through. I usually, you usually have to use a pair of vice grips or something. You pull it through tight. And, uh, and then to get it to seal, yeah, forgot a part. Forgot one of my props here. Hate being unprepared. To get it to to get it to stay in there where it doesn't get pulled out. I do two things. First of all, I take a little stainless steel brad, I think it's a three quarter inch or a one inch brad, and you just push it through, push it through the rope. I usually use a screwdriver or something to push that through. It's not hard to push through. Let's try this. 
the right tool for the job. There you go. So you can see that's all the way through. So that's going to hold it some. And then you cut off, you leave about an inch. You cut off the rope. And leave it like that. And then you're going to burn it. Now, if you've been watching our videos, you know we don't spend a lot of time talking about safety stuff like goggles and things, but you're taking the rope, which is flammable, the wood, which is flammable, and fire. So if you haven't done it before, take it outside and do it. Um, I've been using the same piece of rope for years to make these things, so I know exactly what it's going to do. And uh, my cameraman, Micah, here, in addition to being a world-famous cinematographer, also happens to be a fireman, so we are doubly safe here. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to light it on fire. Let it burn. It's going to drip a little bit when it burns. Let it burn down until it gets all the way to the wood. And like I said, if you haven't done this before, please do it outside. Am I in trouble with the local fire department for doing this indoors? <laughs> Blow it out, take something, squash it down. That locks the, uh, locks the brad in place, puts a big gob there. These things are not going to pull out. So if you do want to put something, it's just a handy thing to have on a boat. So if you want to put them on, that's an easy way to do it. And let's see, there's one more thing we needed to cover. Oh yeah, heat and bond. Um, I was building the little boat over there and it was, uh, I put the heat and bond on, you know, you run the, the, you run the heat and bond along here to, uh, to, attach the, uh, to attach the Dacron. So I ran the heat and bond around down through there, peeled it off, and then I said I was gonna let the, uh, the Dacron uh, rest. You like to let it relax. So I put it on there and I said, well, I'm going to let it relax. So I left it overnight, came back down. It would not stick. So apparently the process of heating that heat and bond and then peeling the tape off it and then you let it sit overnight, apparently it hardens and becomes the, the hard glue that you want. But uh, so that's just a helpful tip. If you're going to use the heat and bond, uh, don't, don't let it sit overnight without the uh, cover on it or you won't be able to, to work it. So I think that's everything we we're going to cover today.